<laughs> April 2021 numbers are in the house. Let's chat about it, shall we? Let's roll. All right. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Angela O'Hare, your favorite Las Vegas realtor. And I have Mr. Roberto Howe, Rockstar Realtor. I'm the realtor, you're the rockstar. Hello, everybody. Hey, I hope everyone's doing well. We are here to do our monthly market update. And in this issue, we will be going over April 2021 numbers. And I also have Mr. Fatso Ozzy Boy here with us because he <laughs> wanted to Dito. he wanted to sit in between us, but his fat butt <laughs> <laughs> my fat butt and his fat butt couldn't sit in between, so I had to put him on the left side of. So how are you doing? Poor Ozzy, I'm good. How are you doing? Uh, <laughs> I'm in the middle of a kitchen reno, so yeah. that's not been fun. I see. There's there's a, a little you know, topsy turvy in the household. Yes, yes, and you know, with the way the market's going, contractors are booked out, oh, they're super yeah. busy. So I may have a kitchen by the end of this month. We'll see. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, just relax your expectations and yeah. it'll all work out. Exactly. You know how it goes. Time's just gonna go boom just like that. A lot of out fast food or, you know, a lot of postmates and DoorDash. That sounds like my life normally. <laughs> so, <laughs> other than that, business is picking up, or business has always been picking up. Yeah. So, what's going on with you and your life? Um. Yeah, that business has been great, and uh, I got some renovations happening at the house soon too, but they haven't been uh, started. Uh, but uh, I've, I've made up my mind. I've got my contractor ready to roll, so that'll be fun. Uh, but most of it's on the exterior of my house, so I don't have to worry too much about, you right. know, my life getting turned upside down. And, um, you know, I got to be on TV again. Oh, uh, yeah, this I week. saw that. Someone commented on one of my videos said that they saw Rockstar Rob on TV. Yeah, they didn't call me <laughs> Rockstar Rob, but they did call me Hal Robert a bunch of times, <laughs> which is funny. That's my bizarro world name. Uh, apparently, I'm a very evil guy trying to rent properties that aren't really for rent to people right. in Bizarro World. Right. So, um, yeah, that was an interesting thing. Very cool to get the word out that uh, there are scammers out there. A yeah. lot. Especially if you were trying to rent a property off of Craigslist. Yeah. I, I mean, I still think you should get your list, speaking of a list, from an actual agent. Now, it's tough for us to go and show these properties. As a matter of fact, it's not happening. Yeah. Uh, but you can at least get a list from us and then apply for those properties and then you know that you're applying for a property that's actually legit. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I will be doing a video of my before and after kitchen. Look forward to doing that. Stay tuned. It probably won't happen for another month, but you, at least you get to see the whole renovation process. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I have one that I haven't edited for my house when I had it already done. <laughs> it's, it's been three years now. Oh, uh -oh. Whoops. <laughs> whoops. A little long. We are going to get into the numbers, and this is what you really want to know. Yes, what it is. What happened last month for April? And let me tell you, I was actually kind of shocked about these numbers. So Yeah, they are shocking. Yeah, they're very shocking because we had predict the peak was last March. Well, I mean, we, we thought that was an extreme jump and that yes. we might not see such a, a movement in the next, the following month. Right. Meh. Wrong answer on that one. Yep. Meh. Dead wrong. So there were 3,528 single family homes that sold in the month of April, which is actually down 5.3% from March, but up 79% from April 2020. Of course, why is that? Well, we had a we had a, a bit of a divot. We had a time. pandemic going on last April. So yeah. as we mentioned in our previous market update, we know that uh, your over year numbers are going to be huge. They're all over the place. Right. I mean, we just couldn't have. You, you put yourself into that time, and you, it was impossible to predict what was going to happen next. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then 
I'm shocked about this next number because I thought that we were at the peak last month, but the median price went from 363000 in March to 375000 in April. Wow. What? Yep. Oh my That's gosh. That's a nice little leap. That's yeah. a nice leap. That means that there's a lot of over, appra uh, over appraisal. You know, people are paying over appraisal, cash offers, over asking. Yeah. You know, you name it. They're 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 pumping up the uh, the numbers. Yeah, and that's up 3.3 percent from um, March, but up 21 percent from the prior year. Obviously, again, because we were in the middle of a very lockdown pandemic thing going yeah. on last year. But 375,000 is the all-time high that we've ever seen here in the Las Vegas Valley. Yeah, that's um, that's pretty, that's mucho. Yes. That's mucho. And there's some really funny videos out there that I wish I had made <laughs> about about this, like the I Apple one. I posted one. I haven't you, seen that. You have one, and then uh -huh. there's an Apple one. It's like a guy going, you know, I got an Apple for sale. And one, one guy's like, hey, I'd be interested in that Apple. And he's like, oh, nice try. We're going to put it up for bid. And it's, he goes through this whole thing. It's just it's so true it's 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 almost it's it's silly it's just it's like yeah. ridiculous it is pretty crazy out there and i have a feeling for the next couple of months at least that we will remain strong oh yeah um i'm feeling it right now i'm having clients calling me i'm in town can you show me houses uh no <laughs> yeah well kidding. you know the interesting thing is even the places that these people are leaving their markets are still remaining strong as well so right uh, that's kind of like bewildering because it's not just people fleeing because their market is, you know, they're just getting out before their, their house isn't worth as much. Right. No, their house, they're selling their houses relatively quickly and they're making a decision and, you know, people are continuously being pushed by the, the, uh, the things that are, um, you know, those motivations. Yes. A know. lot of motivation, especially if you're moving from California. Yeah. That's a big one. For <laughs> All sure. of those taxes and the, uh, we're not going to get into politics right now. Anyway, so. Caitlyn Jenner coming up quick. Oh my <laughs> God. Seriously. Yeah. Seriously, hey, you think I, she's going to win? I'm probably not, but I, I welcome, <laughs> I mean, look, I welcome the fun. She, <laughs> she did make an incredible ad. It's actually really incredible, the uh, political ad. I, I even had to say something about it, and I don't... How old I, is she? Um, I'm not sure. She's even old enough to run? Oh, yeah. yeah Caitlyn Jenner? Caitlyn, Caitlyn Jenner's the, the dad, or was the dad. Oh, I thought I was thinking it was the girls. <laughs> no, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's what's really funny uh, about it. Oh, this that's is, right. Duh. It's really, uh, it used to be Bruce. Right. I get it now. So it, it's an ad that has like uh, him, uh, you know, when he was a him and he was, he was, he was com competing for the Olympics and he's talking about having that co competitive edge and, and it's like, <laughs> really, it's actually very inspiring. You're like, wow. Okay. Uh, I mean, Hey. I, I want the competition. I want people who want to make good things happen. It sounds like she wants to make good things happen. See how out of touch I am? I didn't realize or put two and two together that Caitlyn Jenner was Bruce. That's yeah. kind of sad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, you know, it'll get around. Yes. <laughs> if you don't know, you're going to know soon. This is pretty big news, and it'll be sweeping news. I'm sure it'll go through all kinds of cycles. Oh, yeah. A lot know. of memes about it, too, I'm yeah. sure. I, I mean, it seems like people are behaving about it. Uh, oh, that's good. So far, you know. Well, he'll probably get the whole LGB... Sort of, but not really. He's running as a Republican. So, oh, really? Uh, in California, right? What? You know? so a Republican not, in California? Yeah, not only that, but uh, she's saying... Uh, she, like, I don't know. I won't get into any further. But there's definitely some, uh, as far as that's concerned, some off-the-beaten-path stuff that Caitlyn is is um, a little bit more okay with that m maybe some of that community isn't going to be you know they're going to be confused <laughs> they're going to be like I don't know what to do here I want to support this but some of that 
Mm, nah. <laughs> well, anyways, let's get back to the market yeah, update. Yeah, sorry. Okay. So the luxury market did pretty well. There wasn't as many homes that sold in the luxury market as it was last month. However, the median price did increase. So there were a total of 143 homes over a million dollars that sold for the month of April, which last the month before was 159. So there was a 16 home decrease. However, the median price went from 1.4888 oh however that works to 1.54 million one yeah okay so, so just, it had a ninety-one thousand increase in medium price in the yeah. luxury market yeah so still very robust there yeah. the 16 home decrease for the for the jump that they had had the prior month is like you know right exactly not a big deal i guess that's where we could say we were right <laughs> yeah i mean the luxury market homes really. are selling just as fast the median um, medium price still went so what am i saying no it was, we were wrong <laughs> That's selling. Everything's just selling, no yeah. matter what. <laughs> I've got a, a small bungalow uh, that's off the side of Buffalo and uh, Sahara. That's you know, it's just cardboard. I'm, it's <laughs> actually. It's, for I'm sorry, I just got a text. It's sold already. <laughs> it's awful. Yeah. Uh, so in April, we had a total of three thousand six hundred and ninety-nine new listings which is up 3.1% from March and also up, obviously, 47% from the prior year. Yeah, we are actually seeing a little bit more inventory. Yep. Just just a little bit. Not but enough, but a little. The demand is so much that it just, I mean, it's yeah. just like a vacuum cleaner, it's just gone. So, yep. But that's good. That means there's a little bit of that, and I have been getting more and more calls. Uh, just sellers, no, you don't want to be too late on this. No. No. Um, this is this is my goodness time. My goodness. What well, do you, want you know, for there's a lot of factors in play, and we always talk about these factors. And and one, the moratorium, eviction moratorium. If that officially does end in Mar, what June or, or is it June? The CDC is going to end it, or well, the CDC has been struck down by a court. Uh, so, but our our governor is ending it May. 31st. Is it, is it May? Yeah. Or either May it's 15th May or, or 31st. June, early June. Yeah. I can't remember. So from what we understand, Biden's going to extend the forbearance till June 30th of this year. However, I did hear that he may extend it till December. So there's two factors at play. If it's extended in June, I mean, if it ends in June, then expect more homes to come on the market. That means if you're a seller, that means you have more competition to sell your home. Yeah. You may not get as high as you were right now. Yeah, well, exactly. You're not going to be able to dictate the terms that you can right now. Uh, the question in my mind is that you, so even though they, uh, the, the federal forbearance would be, you know, have a cutoff point, though there are agreements the banks have made with people that have different time frames that do not coincide True. with the federal forbearance. Um, so uh, the, 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 to me, in my mind, it would mean that we're going to see the, these things drop in. Trickle. You know, you, you, well, you might get a load here. You might right. get a load there. Um, so, I, ideally, that's what happens. Right. But we, I can't. We don't know. We can't predict. We don't know for sure. So you gotta kind of assume, especially if you're a seller. I mean, I would absolutely be assuming this that those marker downs are going to be important, and I want to get in before those uh, really ramp up. Exactly. So you know, pay attention in the next month if. If, if these are if this is going to be extended or if it does end and if it does end I would list my house like ASAP yeah I would <laughs> say so because I mean you're gonna have well you're gonna have a lot uh, these these people that are selling their homes are not gonna be like the homeowners that are selling right now right they're gonna want to get that done quickly get some get something out of the home not not lose uh, money but they're not gonna be as uh, maybe picky um, and as like aggressive uh, yeah they're just you're gonna want to move that property a little bit more swiftly yes um so that's something and boy that's that's an interesting thought too even just for the rental market what does that mean if you have people that are selling their homes that can't can no longer buy because they're in that situation they've got to go to the rental market right but then you know too because the eviction moratorium is ending that means those sellers can now actually put the homes on the market or they actually can now be viewable because mm -hmm. a lot of those homes said no show so, so yeah so this is this th that you're now you're talking about the two prongs so right. you have the forbearance and the the moratorium for that that could be happening at the same time 
uh, in, if, though, if there is a line of investors that can't wait to get out of their properties and you have the forbearance, now you may have, well, you may have an evening out to say the least. Right. So what does that mean? I mean, ultimately, does do we take a dive in all the equity that we've gained from now? Well, or do we stabilize? So and that's something that we can't really predict. So what I, uh, here's, I can, I can predict something okay. that I'm making this thought, uh, I'll keep it <laughs> short, but if we have another round, like we are right now, right. in other words, we have these new highs, we have these new comparables that now sellers can go out and say, I want this for my property because that's what my neighbor sold for or whatever in the last few months. And we see that people are offering above asking, waving appraisals and doing that for another period, like another several month period. Mm -hmm. I do believe we are teetering at that point on a value adjustment that would come after that. Some people like to call that a bubble. Right. Now, do I think it's 2008? No, I think it would just be correction. It would be so, uh, you know, I just would be careful about at, like right now, a lot of these, these things that people are doing are making sense. Right. But in a few months, if this continues, yes, I have to say it does no longer make sense and you have to be very careful about what you're doing. Yeah, exactly. Because because if there is like a slight pop, then all the people that bought right now are still good because it may, I mean, it's not going to drop that much. Well, we have no idea, right. but, but yeah, you could see, you could see a, a very quick turnaround. Um, and very quick, I mean, in the housing market could be a, a matter of months, right? Not like uh, today it was one value and then tomorrow it was all of a sudden. No. Exactly. I mean, it's that would be a gradual that would, thing that doesn't just. Yeah, usually the housing market moves much, much slower. Uh, I mean, that's why these incredible gains are so astounding because we haven't seen those, well, really since prior to the crash, which we all. That does get people a little worried. Yeah. I mean, very different dynamics right now. So I wouldn't say don't worry. <laughs> I wouldn't say no worry at all. <laughs> but don't worry. but I do think that um, right now <laughs> this is all kind of like it go, it's all it, all the everything adds up. Yeah. You give it another round of this. Oof. I don't like it. Yeah. Yeah. There was also a total of 1827 single family homes listed without offers at the end of April, which is up 3.1% from March and down 69.8% from the prior year, obviously, because again, the same theme that's going on is yeah. because we we're in a pandemic last year and there was tons of houses on the market last year. Yeah. Well, it just screeched to a halt. You couldn't even go, you couldn't have a, a open house. You did hardly anybody want to go look at property. Right. So, right. Yeah. Uh, but I do have to feel a little bit, uh, like, you know, all these poor properties that can't sell right now, <laughs> what's wrong with them? They're terribly overpriced or they're junk, yep. all right? So, I mean, it, the, the, the market still plays out that way. If you're overpriced, you're just ridiculous with what you want. Or if you have a piece of junk you want too much to for, which I am seeing, then you're going to hang out for a little while until, well, unless, I mean, people are still going to throw you an offer. Yeah. But if you don't accept something that's reasonable, then you're going to hang around. Yeah, you know, and um, I mean, these appraisers are going crazy themselves because, you know, they get these listing agents that scream in, you know, blah, 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 this should be this price. But, you know, if you're financing and you didn't waive an appraisal contingency, then, you know, the appraisers aren't appraising to appraise, if that makes sense. To, to, they're not appraising to contract value. Right, yeah. exactly. They, they shouldn't be. Um, and they are, they do have their own licenses to be aware of and to, yeah. be, and to protect. And they do have to be smart. If it's not within reason, if it's not something that they can actually put on paper and say, yes, here's why we can compare this home to that home and say the value is there, then they're probably not going to. And you're going to get a, a myriad of different uh, personalities right. when it comes to an appraiser. I mean, it's still a human being that has to go out there and look at that. I was going to say, if an appraiser appraises something, and you know, usually when we do comps, we pull six months worth of homes that sold. Sure. But things that sold back in December, you can't really compare to what's selling now. I mean, those are, I don't think, good comps just because of how crazy that the market has been. Does that make sense? Well, it, it's still technically a comp, but, I know. It's, but the market has moved up so drastically that, uh, you know, it is, it's, 
it's not for the seller it's not a great comp you know they're like right. oh what is this that sold for 50 grand less you yeah. know that was um, that was last year <laughs> yeah that was 150 grand less what are you talking about so uh you know that there are they do understand the movement of the market they can uh have some of that put into it the uh inertia so to speak right um that's in the market that of where the values are going but uh, this is why those um appraisal you know gap th those funds towards appraisal gap or waiving appraisal contingencies which i'm not a big fan of waiving an appraisal right. contingency not at all but uh having money towards the gap allotted and saying i'll put up this much so at least you're capped off right. um that's that's happening a lot um but the biggest trend now is 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 waiving the appraisal contingencies and not even putting a cap well if you from if, what i'm seeing if you got the flow and you, you want to go you're it's yeah. all right but it's just not something that i i find terribly necessary i mean i guess if you know that for sure that you're going up against somebody who's going to do that right and you're only going to go to a certain point then yeah you're you're not going to get that property but I, I there is some amount of reasonable responsibility that we all have to take here yes <laughs> yes and you know what you know the last crash last crash was blamed on the lenders the lenders are very stringent strict they're str right i mean they Th yeah that that's actually what i can it's that's actually a, an argument for why we we are strong right now and it's very different is because there's so much cash involved right in this market so when people are buying these properties they're putting a lot of cash into it yeah that cash is strong like before it was just you just go get the loan and it appraised. Right. It magically appraised for a whole lot more this month. All right. You know, that was 2008, you know, right. or 2006, I should say. Um, so very different now. And that's why it's, that is something important to note that you're, you're, you're seeing your neighbor move in and pay. They're paying yeah. cash out of pocket to be able to get to that price. Yeah. 81.5% of the closings was on the market for 30 days or less. The month before, that number was 74%, and this time last year was 69.5%. Uh, so we're seeing the houses are selling within days, hours. Mm -hmm. uh, the biggest trend is list the property on Thursday, Friday, get oh yeah stack the offers up over the weekend, and make a decision on Monday. Sunday Produce your night, highest and best yep. offer. Um, and figure out with your agent what are you willing to give up. Yep. Your left leg, your right leg, a your pony. left arm, your house. Uh, uh, yeah, a pony. <laughs> your, your animal your right Ferrari. here. <laughs> yeah. What are you giving up? <laughs> what are you going to give up? <laughs> so, I mean, 84, That's I haven't seen that number strong since 2018. 2018, they were staying consistently, you know, it was moving fast. Right. A couple years ago or a few years ago now well it's uh you know i mean that, that that's it the the, the true the true tale is in certain price ranges that these things are gone like you said in a, in a weekend right i mean if you didn't get in there to check it out and offer on it right away it was gone before you knew it exactly but it also gives you time if you know it was listed a thursday friday you have the whole weekend to see it because Supposedly decisions aren't going to be made till Sunday night or Monday morning. I mean if you uh, in some cases just be careful <laughs> Yeah, true. You know, I, I, I uh, I'm a big fan of the coming soon listing So putting it on Tuesday, maybe that we're gonna have it on Thursday go live Thursday And like you said, I mean I had so many on my last listing which I just listed a week and a half ago that or, Yeah, a week and a half ago that by Saturday we were like Ooh, we we got more than what we need right here. We got three yeah. huge offers. Like yeah. you know, what's the point of stacking anymore? Exactly. Um, and uh, so the seller was ready to roll. Now I like I do like for agents that might watch this. I do like when you guys uh, spell out the parameters of what to expect. That's yeah. really wonderful for everybody. Exactly. And in this time, uh, it's a small it's a small deed that we all appreciate. Yeah. Exactly. You know. Um, so that way we, we can relay this information to yeah. our buyers and say, hey, this is what's going on. If you're not going to get back till Monday, make sure it's not till Monday. Oh, and be aware, their agents are telling people what their highest and best is, which you're not supposed to do. Well, you can if nope. it's permission from the seller. Ask your broker. You cannot. Oh. You cannot do that. It Even if not. the seller per gives you permission to do Correct. so? Correct. You can tell them, you, they can, they, you can tell people the highest and best offer, but you cannot, or not highest, not sorry, high, not highest and best offer, but you can tell them 
that you have multiple offers, right? And but you cannot be giving out the amount. Ooh, I had yeah. an agent give me an amount. I had some real yes, and it's happened for me. Uh, and I almost did it. I had to ask my broker. I was like, wait a minute, I don't think I can do this because my seller was like okay with it. Right. She was like, tell them. I want more. <laughs> See, they'll beat it, you know? Said, you know, let me just check on this real quick. And no, you can't do that it's that not way. Ethical. It's not ethical. And I had an agent um, actually change, we offered, and we ended up getting the property. The agent changed the price in the MLS before we had agreed to our offer oh, price. Oh, I hate when people do that. That is totally That's wrong sneaky. and should be complained on. And well, there's a lot of agents. I'm that letting do that. this deal get done, and then that agent is going to have a little rude awakening. Yeah, because I mean, you cannot, there's... you cannot do that. That is totally like saying, "Hey, here's my highest offer. If you want to beat it, uh, here you go." Yeah, that's very tricky, sneaky. Wrong. Wrong. Yes. Well, that concludes at least this portion of the market yeah. update. I just kind of wanted to go over new construction. And, you know, a lot of times since we've been feeling the pinch in the resale arena, people have been going to new construction. But let me tell you, uh, it's still just as crazy out there as it has been. Lumber is outrageous. Right. Outrageous. You're getting beat over the head by And, lumber. you know, I have a lot of new home sales this year. And my clients are getting emails from the builders stating, stating that they are getting six to eight weeks built extended um just because of the they time yeah they, they can't, can't get it well you know canada's got a big problem we get a lot of lo our lumber from canada um and they are just locked down like you wouldn't believe they have hardly any of the vaccine uh they are having an, all kinds of problems getting, oh wow they, they're basically you can't like you can't visit your friend's house you're not allowed to wow in canada i mean a number of crazy stringent things and that is affecting the, the an industry which does feed us a lot a lot a lot of our lumber that makes sense yeah so that's a big one america let's give canada our neighbors some shots right oh, some well vaccines. we're gonna get around to it um <laughs> uh, we got we got we need uh, some lumber no. i believe india is out there begging for it too <laughs> um so uh it, it's I think the new homes to, to build one is average about forty thousand dollars more for the cost of the of, of yeah. the materials. Yeah, and you know, don't expect to close. I mean, used to five months tops. You know, now yeah. it's seven ten a year. Yeah. You know, well, a Mesa that, Ridge. That's why. Yeah, and year. then that's what makes the resale market so hot is because you got people who can't wait that long, and right. they're just like, I'll pay for this thing. And yeah. expect to pay more. In my opinion, I think new construction is a lot more than resale, for the most part. Yes, of course. Yeah, absolutely. And then also too, and I always try to educate you guys on this on property taxes is that. Uh, property tax on new construction is 1% of the total purchase price, which includes the base, the lot premium, and any updates oh, or upgrades it. that you put into it. Mm. So if you buy a million dollar house, then your um, taxes, property tax is going to be $10,000. Okay. Just info on yeah. that. Let's see whether build time, limited lots still available, you know, it, it's just, it's a, it's a rat race out there right now. And all aspects of the real estate market, not just new homes, but it's just, it's a rat race. Well, that said, I feel very fortunate, and I'm sure you do too. Yes. I know that some agents are struggling out there, and we wish you the best. Hopefully you listen to some of our advice, and yes. you like what we have to say. Um, and, of course, all you sellers and buyers out there, we hope... You're enjoying, I mean, I enjoy, thank you, Ange, for having me come on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and if uh, you'd like to download the full report provided by the Las Vegas Realtors, I posted a link to it down in the description below. Let us know in the comments how you, or what you think the Las Vegas market's going to trend to. Or I'd what, love to hear what yeah. you have to say. Yeah. We always like to banter a little bit back and forth if you, if you give us the chance. Uh, yep, exactly. But as always, if you like this video, you know what to do, right? Hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment down below, share with a friend, and smash that subscribe button. And thank you so much for watching. Rock on. And do it peacefully. And, and we'll, we'll see you on the next one. one. Yeah. Bye-bye.